And good afternoon, and welcome to the mix. <laughs> We're really glad you're checking us out today on uh, Facebook. Thank you for taking time to check us out. Chris, i got to ask you, man, it's been kind of a busy weekend, a long weekend for a lot of us. We got a chance yeah. to celebrate the holiday yesterday. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happening, but one of the big things from this weekend, we were just talking about this, was there's a big football game that happened that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I'm not, a, like, I don't sit and watch all football games, but I happened to be watching the end of the Vikings Saints game. Um, in fact, Sherry and I were sitting there, and I'm like, hey, there's like two minutes and 20 seconds left. I'm like, do you want to watch something else, or do you want to watch this? Because I don't think either one of us really had, you know, we didn't care one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, two minutes and 20 seconds turns into 45 minutes. And then, like, at the end, like, that whole thing was crazy. That was just crazy. So three lead, three lead changes in the final two minutes. Right. So that's why it lasts 45 minutes. And, yeah. And the most improbable of catches for the final touchdown. It and, was. I know. Uh, just to, I couldn't I, believe it. Yeah, we're actually watching a movie. I might mention this a little later. We're watching a movie. So I got a phone call from my dad saying, did you just see that? And I had to go back and watch the whole thing. So it was pretty cool. So, Chris, I know you're not the big NFL fan, but that was kind of a big deal. Now going into the championship games this weekend, any big predictions? Um, I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to, like, <laughs> to name like all four maybe, teams. I, I, okay, I would say probably Philadelphia. Okay. And Ooh. probably, wait a minute, which, one are, which one's Philadelphia playing? Philadelphia's playing Minnesota. Okay, then I'm saying Philadelphia and probably the Patriots. I, I think the Patriots is kind of almost a sure bet. Yeah. But I'm just just to play the the opposite role in that, I'm going to pick both of the other teams. Okay. Legitimately, I don't know if it's just because I want to be a fan of the Jaguars and Leonard mm -hmm. Fournette or whatever, but I'm pulling for both of the other teams. Mm -hmm. Josh, what about you over there, man? The Steelers were supposed to be a sure bet as well, but here we are, Jaguars, so I'm going to keep that. The other one's toss up. I think. I think I do like the Vikings though. Yeah. I mean, if I were going to pull for anybody in all of that, I would definitely pull for the Florida team. Yeah, yeah. that's Just, right. I'm with you. I'm with you. Anyway, anybody but New England. I know we have some fans. Some I know. People in church that, are not fans I, of that I, statement. I'm careful not to say that, but <laughs> that's what I believe. <laughs> Listen, we love all of you Patriots fans. If you're paying attention, we are glad that you're part of this. But um, we're pulling for somebody else this weekend at least. Go Jacksonville. Anyway, uh, Chris, uh, a lot of stuff coming up we get a chance to talk about here shortly. Uh, some big stuff's happening at church in the next right. couple of weeks. Right, so tell us a little bit about what's coming up on the 28th. Definitely. So so here's the thing. Every four months or so, we have an event called Status. Uh, if you've been a part of Status before, it's normally some food. We gather together, have food. We talked about this last week, chili, soup. Bring all that stuff. It's going to be a great time to eat and hang out starting at 5 o'clock on January 28th. We'll have some music. Uh, we'll have communion at the end. But in the middle, uh, we had a chance to share uh, a little bit of an update. Here's where we've been as a church. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, here's where we're going. Right. And, and it's really been, been amazing. There's some stuff. We talked about this last week. One of the things we'll get to in a second that I said, man, there's one thing coming up that I want to talk about. I can't talk about it yet. And we didn't think we'd make it status. And we didn't. We, mm -hmm. We're going to share that in just a little bit. Uh, but, but beyond that, there's a couple of big announcements that we've been kind of holding off on. Some big things that are already starting to come to fruition this year. Uh, so if you're a part of Ridgepoint Church, I know we've developed a, a base of people who watch online every week. Uh, maybe that's where you're at and you're not watching uh, like in-person service every week. I'd encourage you to be here on January 28th status. Uh, I promise there's some big news we've not been able to share up until status that's kind of been happening behind the scenes. Even today, some really cool things happened that we're going to get a chance to talk about at status. All right. uh, so some big news, some big things that not everyone's aware of. Uh, so be there for status, 5 o'clock, some big information we're sharing. There is child care for children five years and under. Uh, other than that, they're able to stay there. Uh, the status itself doesn't last a whole long time. The kids are always there for food anyway. Uh, youth group will continue to go on, all that stuff. But if you're adult age, make sure that you're there for status that Sunday night at 5 o'clock. All right. So another big thing we talked about. Uh, yesterday or not yesterday Sunday yeah it's kind of throws us yeah, off throws us off we'll do it on a different Tuesday. day so another big thing we talked about on uh, Sunday is uh, partnership mm -hmm. um, uh, this is something we always talk about every January um, we started this about four years ago um, for people who you know, want to be a part of Ridgepoint Church and kind of take that 
um, that being a part of it to kind of the next level. Um, and uh, uh, it's something called, we call partnership. Uh, it's basically how you become or how you join Ridgepoint Church uh, is you become an RPC partner. And uh, really, um, uh, Michael kind of shared this a uh, little bit when he was hosting. But basically, there's kind of three parts to the RPC partnership. One is um, that, um, well, first of all, that, you know, you're saying, you're identifying yourself and saying, I'm a believer. Uh, I've been baptized. You know, I, I've kind of publicly demonstrated that, you know, that, that I'm following Jesus. Um, but then the, the, the other three parts of that are that, you know, I'll attend church on a regular basis. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll try to be a part of a group as mm -hmm. part of that attendance. Uh, and then um, the second thing is that I'll serve in some capacity, uh, you know, in one of our regular ministries or whatever, you know, be a part of that, uh, help out and be a part of what's going on here. But then the third thing is to give um, and to kind of figure out what it looks like to percentage give, you know, to, mm -hmm. to set aside a percentage of your income that goes to, uh, goes to the church and what, what, what God's doing in the church. And so... Um, and uh, right now, what's going on is uh, all throughout January, we're kind of making that push because it's not just something, a matter of just joining and then all of a sudden you're a partner forever. Um, it's actually, it's an annual thing. So we ask people to every year say, you know what, I'm going to be a partner. And so we're kind of in the middle of that process. In fact, if you were a partner last year, uh, you should have already received an email um, that uh, asking you to go ahead and renew. Um, with a link to where you can do that uh, on our webpage. And um, if you didn't get that email, let us know and uh, we'll, we'll make sure you get it again or we'll check on the email address that we sent it to, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you weren't a member or if you weren't a partner last year, then um, we're kind of providing the opportunity right now for you to, to become one. Um, if you want to go ahead and do that this week, uh, you can send me an email, chris at richpointchurch.org. And, um, and I'll send you the link to that. Or if you want to wait till this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to have cards available that you can fill out um, and you can just take care of it that way. Uh, but it's just a way for you to kind of say, you know what, um, I want to be a part of what God's doing here at Ridge Point Church. And, and, and this is, these are the ways that I'm going to do that. So um, we would love for you to be a part of that. So. Absolutely. And, and if you're on the boat, if you're saying, hey, I'm not sure about that, we don't force this upon anyone. We right. say, man, if this is where God leads you. Uh, but it is awesome on, on our part to be able to know here are the people that we're linking arms with this year. Right. Uh, anyone's welcome to come to church whenever they want. But we want to know that there's a core group of people who say, man, we want to be about the missions and values that Ridgepoint Church puts forward. Right. Uh, so excited to see what happens with partnerships. So year. I said last week that I didn't think you could make it to status without talking about this That's next true. event. That's, I and wanted I was, to hold off. I, I, was, wanted... I was right. So tell us about, <laughs> tell us about as, what's as coming. You, as you know, See, I got myself in, in hot water in two ways last week, Chris. Oh, yeah. First well, of all, I, was, I, I wasn't going to go you, there. You but let that pass. No, I, mean, I, I appreciate it. Last week, I got to say this. I said something. I don't even remember exactly me saying this portion of it, but mm. evidently I said something about... I'm sure we could probably get a replay <laughs> if we needed to. So. Uh, my wife's chicken chili uh, was a little bit more liquid. It, to me, it was more soupy. Uh, evidently, I was thinking of something else she had made because she made some incredible... Chili the other day, so I had to apologize and take all of that back. It was really, really good. We ate all of it. Uh, so that's the number one thing I messed up. Number two, I said, man, there's a fundraiser coming up. We've never done this before. Uh, I did. I wanted to hold off until status. I have some great people that are part of the church that are helping us plan this whole thing. And they said, no, we have to go public with this now. I start to build up support. And I'm glad that we did. We got some really cool things happening. But coming up April 7th is our first ever Ridgepoint Church uh, bass tournament happened right here in the South Chain. Wow! Uh, so this is a, a really big deal. Our goal is to get 50 boats involved. Um, already, we've kind of put it out there this week. We've had a lot of people that have said they're coming already. Uh, we start putting it out there for sponsorships, and actually, uh, really cool. We start getting some sponsorships in uh, in a major way. And so our goal is to have 50 boats be part of the first ever uh, RPC bass fishing tournament. That'd be a, a huge amount of boats for the first. First tournament, but we're we're well on our way of, of seeing that happen. Uh, the way it works is sixty dollars per boat. You can have up to two people per boat. Uh, you catch up to five bass, and then you weigh it, and then whoever wins, there's a cash prize at the end uh, for the top three finishers. Yeah, cool. uh, based on fifty boats, if we have fifty boats, uh, the top prize is going to be a thousand dollars. 
that might happen anyway, but our goal is to get the 50 boats there. Uh, really cool event happening right here, you know, South Chain here in Winter Haven. Uh, really excited about that. And all of the proceeds are going to be going to directly towards our mission trip uh, this coming, uh, get going into the fall and in the winter months to Honduras. We'll talk about that more status as well. Yeah. Uh, but all the proceeds... Yeah, I was going to ask about that, <coughs> that. I knew that was like... Mm. One of the things you were still trying to hold right, on to status. Right, right, right. right. There, there's a lot coming in status. <laughs> I got enough to announce, but we'll announce the dates and everything like that at status all for right. the mission trip. But all the proceeds from the fishing tournament are going to go directly towards the team that's going on that trip. So if you're okay. signing up for the trip this year, uh, you want to get plugged in. Uh, the more boats we have, the more fundraising it'll be for that trip. So we're really excited. April 7th, save the date now. Big question, are you going to fish in the tournament? If, if I can get uh, on a boat before okay. the, the biggest thing is you have to have a boat for these tournaments. <laughs> and there are a lot of fishermen in our church. They're pretty competitive. So I'm not sure I'm going to make the cut to get on their <laughs> boat. But I'm going to try. We're going to see what happens. You might have to pay to get into the tournament and pay somebody to ride in their boat. Yeah, right? I, I thought about it. <laughs> I was going to rent a boat. I'm like, I'll rent a boat. And get, I might not know where I'm going. I'm going to end up lost somewhere in, in the chain. But, yeah. but anyway, <laughs> I hope so. Chris, what about you, Ben? Are you going to... Uh, I, I don't I don't know that that's really in my okay. wheelhouse. Right. You know? <laughs> kind of like football. I, I don't know. Maybe Chris can help with the scale weighing or something. Oh, I don't know. Right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe stay away from, from the fish entirely. <laughs> but great response. Really excited. April 7th fishing tournament. We'll see what happens with that. All right. So, so on uh, Sunday. Uh, time to get serious. Yeah. You, uh, you kind of pause a little bit in the service. Just to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about kind of commemorate uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, and so what was kind of in the inspiration for that? And I know you shared a quote. Yeah. You share that with us. Yeah, again? yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so there are a number of things that uh, have been going on. You know, we know uh, we're, we're living in um, what has become just a, a political uh, football in terms of where people are at right now, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people frustrated and upset at, at each other, mm -hmm. and, and I'm. My goal, and, and I said this in both services, this isn't a political statement at all. You know, we don't we don't have to, you know, hide our heads in the sand. We know that uh, there's been a lot of controversy about people kneeling for anthems and uh, movements, and <clears throat> you know, even the comments our president made last week that everybody gets up in arms and, and everyone's yelling at the other side. Okay. And, and a lot of it is right now this racial tension that we're experiencing as a country. And I found, I found it amazing. Like we, I kind of had considered doing something like this, but it wasn't until Saturday night. I was kind of praying through and getting ready for Sunday morning that I'm like, man, we just can't stay silent on topics like this. Uh, topics that Jesus calls us to get involved in. Uh, you know, Jesus clearly says when the gospel goes out that it's for everybody. That it's, There's no more Jew or, or Greek. There's no more bond and free. That it's, it's for everybody. And we tend to put ourselves in, 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 in these pockets of you know, if, if this person believes the same things I believe in terms of my politics or in terms of my even my, my faith setting or if they look like me, if they're the same color <coughs> as me. And we, we tend to ostracize ourselves quite a bit and view anybody who doesn't look or think like me as, as the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you know, I found it amazing that we're having these conversations in the United States in 2018 when this is stuff that we thought we had defeated mm -hmm. decades ago. And so especially the juxtaposition of last week and all the tension with Martin Luther King's celebration happening this past Monday, I said, man, we, can't, we just can't keep silent on it. Right. Uh, so when I was kind of thinking through that, what that looked like, I came upon this quote that I used on Sunday morning, that love is the only power that can transform enemies into friends. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, you know, we always, we have this tendency, this, this overwhelming tendency to view people who, who don't think like us or, or act like us or look like us as the enemy. And they're not. Mm -hmm. Even someone who has a political position that's uh, very different from myself, they're not the enemy. And, right. and the more our country starts to realize that, the the less we make. You know, we're, we're all we're all trying to get to the same spot. We're choosing to do that differently, and that's fine. There's differences of opinion, and I'm fine with that. But just because someone disagrees with me, doesn't make them my enemy. Right. And we, we have to deal with that. So. Getting into the sermon part, um, you talked about this idea of moving from confession to surrender. Um, can you kind of dive a little bit deeper into that and yeah. what that looks like? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I've loved the response the last couple of weeks to, to these first two messages of this year. Uh, you know, confession is, is a tough one because 
Now, like I talked about Sunday, we have a tendency to want to hold things close to the best and not be open and honest with it. If I'm struggling with something, uh, I don't want everyone in, and not everyone should know. My, I should be airing my dirty laundry for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm getting at. Uh, but also, if I try to bear the weight alone, it's not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And so confession is me putting everything out in the open and saying, man, I struggle with this. But surrender is the ultimate liberator, and that it is me letting go of that. And I talked about this idea that, man, when, when I'm letting go, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to say that no longer is that sin going to hold me back. Right. No longer are the grudges of life going to hold me back. Uh, no longer is, is grief going to hold me back. And, and the last one, which was a tougher one, was no longer are my dreams going to hold me back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes I think that, you know, we go into the year, and I talk about this, we go into a year saying, here's the things I want to accomplish this year, here are my dreams, or, or maybe even 10 years down the road, here's the dreams that I have for myself, for my family. And we pray, believing God that, man, this is what's supposed to happen. Right. And sometimes it doesn't. And, and that's the craziest thing, because when I started to pray those things, it felt right, it felt good. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes my dreams get in the way of God's bigger dreams for myself. And so I got to kind of the idea that... Um, that sometimes we think that when, when God answers our prayer or our dreams with the answer no, that it's because, well, those dreams must have been too big for me. Right. But sometimes God says no, not because our dreams are too big, but because they're too small. Mm -hmm. God says, Jay, that's so much more for you than you ever had thought or anticipated. Right. Uh, so that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the, the difference between the two and where we're kind of going with that. So you, you mentioned some of the things that you, you already mm -hmm. mentioned, some of the things that we right. might have to surrender. Um, are there others, and what do, what do you think is the most difficult to, yeah. to surrender? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's always other things. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I tried to categorize as many of them as I could in those topics. You know, sin is such an all-encompassing topic. Honestly, I could have talked about sin, and it could have covered refusing to, I mean, refusing to let go of a grudge is, is sin, and ultimately not getting over grief can be sin, and, and clinging to my dreams when God has something else for me, all those are sin. So sin is kind of all-encompassing. Uh, but I tried to get more specific when I talk about grudges in particular because a lot of people struggle with that. Um, and, and then when it came to, uh, you know, especially the one with dealing with dreams, that's, that's pretty all-encompassing as well. The toughest one, I think, is the one, because uh, I think it's seasonal. If you ask which one is tough, it, toughest, I, well, <laughs> it depends because they all can be tough. Right. Uh, it's a seasonal thing. If I'm struggling with a specific sin in my life, then right now the toughest one is whatever that sin is. Right. Uh, if I'm struggling with holding on to a grudge, then right now grudge is the hardest thing. But but I think for what I see in in in, in my life and the life of our community uh, right now, for entering into 2018, the toughest one might be grief. Um, yeah, I kind of I, I really um, I guess I enjoy looking out on on the crowd on Sunday morning and being able to kind of feel where people are at. And I felt like overwhelmingly that when I started talking about overcoming grief because of the hurt that a lot of people experience, that was the one saying, yeah, mm -hmm. I have a hard time getting past that. And if I have a hard time getting past that grief, um, not that there's anything wrong with grief. The Bible says that we should grieve for a mm -hmm. season. But if I never get past that grief, then at some point I choose to stop living. Mm -hmm. And that's not the way God intended it. God intended grief to be there for a season for you to go through the seven stages of grief to come out on the other side with hope, not with bitterness. Right. And those are the two responses that are possible. So we say, God, I don't like this season. I don't like that I had to go through this loss. I don't like that, that I had to go through this hurt. But on the other side, I want to experience the hope that's found at the end of that season. Right. Hmm. All right. So, uh, I mean, heavy stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Today's, but good been, stuff. Yeah, today's yeah. been a little bit of a heavier topic. I know Josh kind of watching back there. Anything that we miss or any comments we need to address? Nothing big. I just, you know, my, my encouragement, we talked about the football game in the beginning. If you're questioning God or need to see a miracle, watch the end of that game. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. I, I actually, I had a chance to, uh, they actually have one video. If you've seen it online, it's really incredible. They have one camera angle from the end zone uh, in the stadium there in Minneapolis. And to hear the crowd, to go from this murmur to, like, if you have your volume turned up, you got to turn it down. It's one of the most deafening noises I've I've ever heard on a on a computer. Mm. Uh, so yeah, man, what a miracle. <laughs> so, all right. So nothing else. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Man, right. that's simple. Jay, you didn't say anything that anybody needed to correct today. 
No. Oh, okay. No. Right. <laughs> I mean, he. I think he redeemed himself with the whole chili thing. I kind of yeah. that I wasn't able in the midst of all that to give you one of these. <laughs> <laughs> failures, but it's Josh has been holding it. on to that. <laughs> Wait, uh, it has to be. You know, last week we let him use some sound effects. And we're like, we don't need to keep doing that. <laughs> right, so. right. Right. Uh, so anyway, maybe a little overused, so he kind of <laughs> dialed right. it back. We, this week. we did, we did. Kind of a tamer version of the mix this afternoon. But thanks for taking time uh, to check us out. Feel free at any point if you have any con- uh, conversation for us. Feel free to contact us at any point. If you have any questions, let us know. Again, thanks for checking us out. We'll see you this coming Sunday, nine and ten forty-five.